our normative male alexithemia, traditional masculinities and British men. I have chosen this topic because I researched it in some detail last year and I found it really interesting and I just wanted to take it a little bit further. So here's a little bit of background. Within the UK, men are three times more likely than women to die by suicide and researchers believe this may be partly influenced by an inability to speak about emotions subsequently preventing their own recognition of mental health problems. Um, from reading this, I began to wonder why do much men struggle with this and why is this happening? So one explanation may be a clinical condition called alexithemia and um, alexithemia comes from the Greek for no words. It's originally characterized as a cognitive affective deficit characterized by an impairment in identifying and describing emotion. It's been found in psychosomatic patients, drug dependent patients and patients with PTSD and it's also been related to depression, home, hopelessness, deficits in problem solving, satisfaction of life and substance misuse in general. So, as, it, as I was saying, it was previously recognised as a cognitive affective clinical deficit. However, a psychologist in America called Ronald Levant theorised that um, whilst he was working in the Boston University Fatherhood Project, um, he came across a lot of men who described themselves as being discouraged from expressing and discussing their emotions during childhood. Um, by significant others such as teachers, sports coaches, their peers, their parents. Um, and subsequently, he theorised that the opportunity to develop a vocabulary and awareness of emotions was not given. Subsequently, men often missed the opportunity to develop natural emotional awareness and would lead to instead developing symptoms very similar to clinical alexithemia. And he decided that there may be a normative version that's socialised in men. Um, subsequently, he coined the term normative male alexithemia. So the reason that we decided to do this research is because the research that Ronald Levant has conducted and published has all been completed in America and um, nothing's been done in the UK. Um, so the concept hasn't been legitimised over here. So that was one reason for doing it. Um, and also Great Britain's cultural norms are very similar um, to the normative male laxophic characteristics in some ways, you know, the stiff upper lip, for example, um, espouses like stoicism and emotional repression, um, for example, very similar to um, the symptoms that seem to occur with alexithemia on a, a more problematic scale. Um, also, we thought that establishing a relationship between normative male alexithemia and the traditional male role norm socialisation process in Great Britain could highlight an issue that has, is not yet being addressed. And this could point towards interventions not yet being considered for particular problems with male clients. So, the aim of our of my research study was to investigate the relationship between normative male alexithemia and traditional male role norms in Great Britain. My research question was to what extent is normative male alexithemia associated with subscription to traditional male role norms in Great Britain? And my hypothesis was that participants would display a significant positive association between traditional male, male role norms and normative male alexithemia. I predicted that the more British men subscribe to traditional male role norms, the more they would report characteristics of normative male alexithemia. So, uh, we had 172 participants altogether who were eligible to be put in the analysis and complete because they completed all the questions properly. Um, 
all participants had to be British, cisgender male, over the age of 18, but we did manage to get a really diverse sample in terms of age of people up to the age of 89. And they were recruited either through the university SONA system for course credit or through opportunity sampling, um, such as e um, emails to organisations which have the big male cohort or Facebook posts, um, Instagram, things like that. So basically, we were comparing traditional male role norms and norms of male alexithemia. We had a questionnaire that measured, measured each of those concepts and participants just had to complete both of them. And we then used that data to conduct the correlational analysis. So um, in terms of ethics, some of the questions may, of course, distress because they may have raised concerns for participants about their own behaviour. Subsequently, um, we would we signpost them in the debrief to different organisations that they could contact. And we also give participants the option to omit questions if they did not feel comfortable answering. This study was approved on the 3rd of December 2021. So this is just the, um, the questionnaire for normative male alexithemia. So you, as you can see, there was a seven point Likert scale plus the additional prefer not to answer question and the participants just used after reference which point they thought was most appropriate for each one. And the questions were, as you can see, such uh, measurements such as I have difficult telling, difficulty telling others how I care about them. Um, it is difficult for me to reveal my innermost feelings, even to close friends. And this is the male role norms inventory that we shrunk and um, made our own novel version and just to increase the likelihood that men would complete the study so we had one question for each factor from the original questionnaire um, and these are the ones that we went forward with so for example men should have home improvement skills it's a traditional norm and men should always like to have sex and again they had to Participants just had to indicate on the like the scouts which point was most salient for them. So once participants completed the questionnaires and we got our data and conducted our correlation analysis, we actually did find a significant result um, of 0.04. Um, and it was a slightly positive correlation. So as the more participants subscribe to those traditional norms, that um, the more they displayed symptoms of normative male alexithemia. So there was a association there. However, as you can see, the points are quite well spread on the chart. So even though there is a slight positive association, I think it's important to be conservative when interpreting the data that we've gathered here. So in terms of what this means, um, basically the amount of British men that subscribe, the amount of British men subscribe to traditional male role norms is proportionate to their levels of normative male alexithemia. This confirmed our hypothesis that participants would display a significant positive association between subscription to traditional male role norms and normative male alexithemia. And it's the first direct representation of an association between normative male alexithemia and subscription to male role norms in the British population. And it corresponds to previous research conducted in the States which found that traditional male ideology accounted for unique variants in levels of alexithemia for men. So the impact has been, I think it could be potentially be quite um, important. So in the context of counselling, British men may be unable to effectively process and communicate their emotions, so it will be important to recognise that in practice because obviously alexithemia is known to predict treatment outcome. So the assessment period will be key for male clients. Um, it 
gives an opportunity for councillors to sit, um, assess and highlight any problems that might be similar to alexithymia. Um, and if they do uncover any of these sort of symptoms with clients, then it could point them in the direction of completing an interve intervention that targets that, such as alexithymia reduction treatment. Um, this is a five stage psychoeducational program that's completed pre-treatment that was developed by Ronald Levant, so that could be an option. And then in terms of the wider impact for mental health support and provision, I think it highlights the importance of increasing access to activities that encourage, encourage habits which are known to improve mental health, but don't have put the pressure on men to communicate their emotions if it's something that they haven't yet developed those skills to do. Um, so examples that are well evidenced in the literature are exercise programs, um, access to nature and outdoor activities, lifestyle improvements and lifestyle choices such as diet and sleep and mindfulness activities some could be useful such as body scans um, and walking, mindfulness stuff like that grounding techniques and also socially prescribed activities and one big example is the men's sheds movement in the UK which has been really successful. So signposting men so that could be really useful for counsellors as well. And then also in terms of education and training because as Ronald Levant says it's often the significant um, figures in people's childhoods who are directing the trajectory of their development. So if we can get those people, sports coaches, teachers, even you know parents, and um, just people you know from walk, those walks of life that children come into contact with, if we could get them trained in fostering more more beneficial environments for young people, that could be really that can allow them to develop that emotional capacity. That could be really beneficial. And also weaving these sorts of trainings into the ed education curriculum. Um, you know, I know mental health recognition has has become part of the curriculum, but perhaps more on developing your own mental health and well-being could become a bigger part of the education curriculum for young people in Great Britain. prevent the development in the first place. And then future research, so this study looked at Great Britain, you know, so future research could look at different cultures again, more diverse cultures, and see this would see to what extent normative malalexithemia is a problem. Um, is it a Western problem? Is it specific to just Great Britain and the United States of America? Is it a more wider problem that spread, spreads to other cultures, more diverse cultures? That's, this is what this sort of research could figure out. And we could also look at different ways of me measuring the concepts that we measured in the study. So we use questionnaires, um, which are good, but they are open to confirmation bias. So um, we could use perhaps something as, such as the emotional stroop, which is a good measure of emotional capacity and is a implicit measure as well, so would, would not be as open to those biases. We could also look at different analysis such as t-tests, so we could find measure causation and we could directly measure mental health into the next assessment, which would more clearly identify the relationship between normative alexithemia male or non subscription and poor mental health outcomes. So the take home message is there is a relationship between normative male alexithemia and male role norms in British men, according to this study. Some men haven't, may not have developed the ability to process emotions, which is important in therapy and should be addressed pre therapy if possible. And finally, um, we should look at educating on things clients can do to manage their mental health 
as well as um, therapy if they're working towards being um, able to engage with it. And we should, look, as a society, we could look at targeting that socialisation process at the at the beginning um, through education and training, and that might prevent normal and neuroleptophemia from developing in the first place. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs>